Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Jonathan. Uh, I'll start by telling you a little bit about me. And because we're going to be talking about grammars today, I want to tell you a bit about me in regexes. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm in real life Jonathan on IRC. I can go by that handle. I'm from, depending how you want to look at it, the UK or England or Yorkshire. I've then moved away and I've been living in Spain and Sweden and Slovakia. Uh, they all begin with an S. I don't know what it is about countries that start with an S, other than there's a lot of them in Europe. And I like beer. So, there we go. And all of this is the Pulsic Regex syntax. Um, and I want to sort of build up on that today and talk a bit about grammars. So what's a grammar? Who's ever written a Pulsic grammar in here? Okay, Carl. So, here's the idea. You know when you write a class and you put lots of, say, methods into it and you try and neatly factor this sort of chunk of functionality in your software? Well, the idea of grammars is if you're passing some complex data, you do the same kind of thing. You break that passing task up into lots of manageable chunks and essentially it's like you have a class but we call it a grammar and instead of having methods, it has regexes, and then you can call them from each other to build up parsing for relatively complex things. You can then even subclass them, so you can take a language of some kind and say, oh, I'm going to extend it. Um, and the other nice thing is that it doesn't just parse it, it builds a tree for you as well. So you get a nice data structure out that reflects the data you put in. So these are pretty powerful, and people who play with these tend to say, no, Pelsix grammars are wonderful, but this is how it works. You have some input, and you feed it into a grammar, and well, what happens? Either it says yes, and you get this really nice tree data structure out, or it says, and yeah, and you're happy, okay? Or it says no, and you say, why? And the only thing it says to you is, no. <laughs> okay? And you're like, oh no. <laughs> so let's take an example of this. Let's make a fail grammar. And we'll sort of hope it's going to work, but it probably won't. So here's my data, okay? I, I'm given the task of taking this data which has names of countries, names of destinations, some coordinates. And this is the number of sort of holidays we've sold as a travel company um, to these different destinations. And you look at it and you're like, great, they didn't use some standard format. I'm going to have to pass this crap. So we write a grammar for it. So we start out just by writing grammar. And we'll give it a name. So if you were in the, the mock talk, um, then you'll sort of see, well, class, well, we just write grammar now. It's a type of package. And then we start writing these things called tokens, and we always write one called top first. So what's going on in this? Well, who's written regexes? Okay, more than regexes. So we all know that the hat means the start of the string and the dollar means the end of it. So this oh, means that... five, it doesn't. <laughs> it does. No, it, it'll also match before a, a new line before the end of the string. Only if you add the M modifier. We don't no, have S and M in Perl 6, they're too painful to remember. <laughs> no, so, it's, it's double hat and double dollar in Perl 6 for end and start of line. I'm not talking about the session, but it's off yeah. topic, sorry. Yeah. So anyway, um, we then have plus, um, which means one or more. And then we call country, okay? This calls down to another regex. So we can say, okay, what's in a country? Well, a country is a name and a new line character, followed by one or more destinations. So you can see we're sort of recursively building up this grammar here. We get to destination and we say, well, it had a tab, it had a name, it had some space, it had a colon, and it had some more space. What came next? Well, we want to match a number, but we're matching two of them. So instead of actually, remember, this is going to build a data structure for us we're actually going to get something back where we can look in country zero name or country one name and just index into this and get the data out. 
So we don't want to match a number because we'd get two sort of nums and it'd be weird. So we alias them. We say put it in lat, put it in long. Another colon. You'll note that we can just quote stuff as well to match it literally rather than backslashing everywhere. Um, and then we want the number of sales, which is an integer, and a new line. And then I'm done, I just have to write these really boring rules. So name can be that. Uh, Norm and integer can be something like this. Okay. And we have our grammar. So we take it, and I actually have a file just over here. Okay, so there's the grammar. Down here is the data. And at the bottom here, I just say sales export grammar dot pass. And it'll either give me back a tree or it'll give me back the data. And I just put a question mark to shove it in Boolean context over there. So I'll get true or false. <coughs> so if I run this, false. No. Okay. Fail. Yeah. And we say why. And it just says no. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, no's. So. <laughs> Well, this sucks. So what can we do about it? Well, we could go to the pub. Pubs have beer. <laughs> Beer's good. And we can forget about our grammar if we drink enough. Um, the slight con is that our grammar is still oh, broken. Dang. So um, we're going to have to actually try and fix this. So what can we do? Well, the thing is that you can put a closure of Perl code anywhere you want within any of these regexes. And you can just get it to dump some information for us. So well, let's try that. Let's, you know, so we say, well, after we've matched the name, we'll just say, and you know how you have the, the dollar one and dollar two syntax and so forth, forgetting it, then the positional captures. We have this one forgetting it, the named ones. So we just do this. And if I run this again, OK. We can see that it did no way, and you know, we can go and look at our data, and you know, we can see, oh, there must be something wrong between Russia and the USA. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So, but, but here's the problem, that it's going to get really, really tedious to keep going and putting these in, right? I mean, that was the 1990s. So I wrote a module. I wrote a module called Grammar Tracer. Grammar Tracer just lets us put, put it in a file, which say use Grammar Tracer, and all it's going to do is trace through the parsing so we can maybe find out where it goes wrong without having to put all these print statements in. So this is really nice because it just applies within the lexical scope you write it. You just have to write use Grammar Tracer and it's just going to trace any of the grammars in the scope where you import this module. So let's remove my little hack here. Let's go here. OK, use Grammar Tracer. And let's just run this again. OK, and you can see that it gives me a load of trace output. So let's just go. Back to the top and just look, okay. So it started at top, it called country, it fell into destination, it got one, it didn't have one. Destination here failed because it couldn't match another destination. It went looking for that tab character and it said, oh no, there isn't one. But it's okay because we fell out, we sort of went up one level again and we sort of continued matching. So that the only problem you get is when it sort of fails to match at all. You'll see, you see here, it's actually fallen all the way back up to the top, and that's when we got our sort of it failed. And we can look at this and we can say, oh, it's it's failed somewhere in uh, in sort of this country, and it failed trying to pass the country's name. Uh, if we actually look at what's gone on here, it it passed the destination name here and then failed. It passed Ulan as the name. Um, who knows their Russian geography? No. <laughs> you all need to do the Trans-Siberian. It's great fun, and they give you vodka all the time. Uh, but the data here, look, it's got a space in. Our regex for matching name did it. Yeah, OK. So we immediately knew to go look at name. So that's going to be quite easy to fix, because we want to match some horizontal white space, 
some letter characters, and maybe. Okay. So, yeah, I'm feeling confident I fixed my grammar, so I'll remove the tracer. And we'll run it. Oh no! <laughs> okay. So, so something's still wrong here, okay? And it actually, maybe it's getting further. I mean, if I put the tracer back in, you know, it might be failing somewhere else. Okay? Does it, does it get better? <coughs> Yeah, it did, it did all in Uday. We got to San Francisco now, okay? So, this is kind of nice, but you might be thinking, well, can I have anything more powerful? And the answer is, well, yes, you can. Um, I also then wrote Grammar Debugger. Grammar Debugger is sort of a step up in power. It lets you single step through the grammar, or do things like keep running until you get to a failure. It even lets you add breakpoints in as well. And again, you use it just by doing use grammar debugger. So let's try this. Okay. Play this. Let's go here. And what it does is it gets into top and it gives me a prompt. And if we're not sure what to do, then we just sort of ask it. And <laughs> It does it for anything that you write that it doesn't recognize, okay? So, um, so here, we can just say, well, keep running until you, you know, and maybe until you hit a breakpoint. We can do RF, which is run until it fails. We can do run until a particular rule name. So if I just do uh, our name, okay, and I do that again, you can see it's going and matching each time we call name. I can do breakpointing. So I can do something like breakpoint add country. I can run, and it breaks each time we get to a country. Just do a list of the breakpoints, okay? And if you want to get rid of them all, you can just breakpoint remove, okay? And let's just run it till failure, okay? And you'll note that it, whenever it goes to backtrack on something here, at the rule level, not the individual backtracking level, that would get really tedious. Um, it gives you a sort of call here. So if we just keep running it, um, we can see that it actually ended up failing when we were sort of trying to pass San Francisco's entry here. And it failed to pass the number. Well, again, it's a pretty good hint that we should go and look at our data. And oh, yeah. San Francisco had the cheat to be in sort of the Western Hemisphere. I guess it happens. So, oh, we didn't match negative numbers. Well, that sucks. So, okay, just quote the minus. In Perl 6, anything that's non alphanumeric is meta syntax, so you don't have to try and remember a list. Um, just quote anything that's not, go backslash. So, hopefully, now, if I run through this, I'm just going to let it run. Okay, and it matched. We got to the end, it said all true, and there we are. Now, if you imagine that you're in a situation where you're trying to debug your grammar, um, and you're setting up breakpoints, it might get really annoying because every time you go and start debugging again, it forgets the breakpoints. So, it's also possible to just go in here and just say, is breakpoint, okay? So if I run this now, if I actually just breakpoint list, it's already pre-listed in there. Um, and we can see that we can just keep running, okay, and it keeps going between the destinations. That's kind of nice, but you might be saying, well, can I do conditional breakpoints? Sure. Ah, will break. And what this does, it's a bit different because what it does is it actually gets the match object after we called the rule, and then you can decide to break after it if it was kind of interesting. So you could actually just put, you know, when the match is not true, which means we did a match, um, which is kind of nice. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say, I, I'll just take it as a, this is a closure, so I can just use the placeholder parameter syntax, and I'll just take the match, and I'll say it's Russia, okay? So this will keep running until we finish matching Russia. 
So if I run, we go through, we match Russia, and oh, 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 that's not meant to happen. <laughs> oh, of course, because yes, I needed to match name, right? Yeah. I needed to drill into the match object and say the name is Russia, because of course the whole match was the whole country details. So let's try again. Okay, run this. So it matches Russia. Okay, then it stops. So it, it actually got to the end of that match and then said, yep, yeah, we've matched uh, this node. It had Russia in it. So if you're going for a really huge file and you want to look for a particular thing, um, then you can do it with this. So there we are. So how am I doing on time? Pretty badly, I guess. Um, so let me just say a couple of words about the modules. Um, you may be looking at this and saying, oh, this is sort of pretty tricky stuff to do, it's really deep, you did guts hacking and so on. Um, no, the modules are in pure Perl 6. They actually do it by intercepting method dispatch, because every one of those rules that we call is actually a method call. So all it does is it supplies some kind of custom meta object, and all you're doing when you're sort of saying use grammar tracer or use grammar debugger is saying the grammar keyword means something slightly different now. And it's not that much work. Grammar tracer is 45 lines. Grammar debugger is only 170. Um, and I, I actually have them just over here so you can see how it looks. So I'm just using the term anti-color module, which somebody kindly wrote. Um, and all I do is say my, so we call it something how. It stands for higher order workings. And all I'm doing is subclassing the default implementation of grammars and saying when we try to find a method, do call same, sort of do whatever you would do to find the method normally, and then provided it's not one of these magical names, um, I actually, instead of returning the method, return a closure. And it just knows how to print the tree, maintain the indents, dump the results out, um, and you can see that it actually ends up calling the method somewhere in there as well. Yes, here. Just passes along those arguments. And debugger is basically the same. Um, you can see that this is how you do those is and will things, okay? It's not some magical syntax tweet. It's a generic mechanism for hanging metadata of attributes, of methods, of classes, um, we even that you can see there is up here, okay, this inheritance one, this is actually just being used as a sort of trait on the class. Um, so it all hangs off this extensible mechanism and it's done with multi-dispatch. So all we do is add two extra sort of candidates for this. Um, and that's it. You can see that we get breakpoint break. And yeah, there's, there's a few more things going on here, but in total, yeah, 170 lines, and then just a little, this bit just says, I want to export this meta object, so when you see the grammar keyword, use this instead of the normal grammar implementation. And this is sort of the power of meta programming, that you can actually just take um, sort of existing built-in bits of, of the Perl 6 object world and subclass them and do your own things. And if you want to go even deeper than that, all of the default Perl 6 meta objects are actually composed from roles. So you could go and build your own stuff pretty easily as well. Um, you can say, I'll have C3 method dispatch and, and so forth. And pull it over. So, thank you very much. And if you have questions, please. What was the significance of the equal dot uh, syntax in the, um, when you're aliasing the... Uh Oh, I sort of lied. Um, I wasn't aliasing. I was actually suppressing the original match and giving it a new name. If I did lat equals num, it'll capture num and lat, um, and they'll both be in num as an array. If you want to do, if you want to call a subrule, but you don't want to capture, you can just do dot rule name, um, and that suppresses a capture. So I, all I did was suppress capturing it into num and calling and putting it into lat and long. If you're wondering why the dot, remember it's just like a method call. So you're really just, that, that's where the dot comes from. Could you, so in the examples you gave, you have to go into your file, edit, use grammar tracer, use grammar debugger. Mm -hmm. 
and then go to the command line and do Perl 6. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it possible to do instead Perl 6 minus M, grammar debugger, and pass it the file and start work? Or not uh, do we have minus M implemented yet? No. No? <laughs> okay. If we implemented that, we probably could. <laughs> you were saying earlier that um, it looks in the scope in which it's used. So if it was used in some sort of global context, then we presumably wouldn't be able to see which scope it was trying to debug. Lexical scope. Uh, yeah. It's lexical. M many things in Perl 6 are lexical. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, subs are lexical by default, for example. Uh, Classes aren't lexical by default, but you stick my on it. You'll notice in my code, I actually, all of the stuff inside my module here, you know, that's a my enum. Um, the multis are my by default because they're subs. And, uh, it's quite possible that dash capital M actually gives you a new core. So it actually becomes the old lexical scope, then it all falls out of that. Yes, but you could maybe do it as a, a setting as well. Right. Yeah, that it's would be another option. Yet, so yeah, we'll see. yeah. I, I, there, there should be a way to do this from yeah. a command line way, which would be nicer. For sure. I give out commitments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a question about uh, Perl 6 grammars, which are awesome, and they're mm -hmm. about. Um, how does compatibility work? I mean, can you bring in other sort of libraries of grammars to use them partially, like I was um, doing a language grammar, and I need, I need an expression mm -hmm. parser? So yep. So have you run a, a, for one you can subclass, but that's not very good composability really. Have you heard of roles? Uh, I've heard of them. Okay. <laughs> so a role is like a little bundle of functionality that you can sort of compose into another class. Right. Well, since a grammar is really just a class, but a bit funny, um, actually you can compose. You can write tokens and regexes in roles, and then compose them into grammars. Um, so you can do things like that. Um, so yes, you can get some composability. Um, is is there a way? Um, I, I know some, sometimes it's quite useful to have you know, your uh, your lex uh, separate to your grammar, even when you've got quite a nice uh, sort of grammar syntax like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way of doing that? No, um, that's kind of a design thing that we we basically generate the lexa for you. Um, at the moment, it's slightly naive. We have a branch which Patrick Michaud is getting there with um, slowly um, that actually builds a whole bunch of NFAs for you um, out of your grammar. So it actually goes and plays spot the token um, and, and figures it all out. I was thinking of things like, uh, so. like passing significant white space where it's quite nice to do that in Alexa um, and I, it just seems quite difficult to do it as a grammar. Yeah, well actually we have a built-in um, it's called WS, you inherit it from the default grammar. Um, and if you just do dot WS, it actually does the significant white space tracking for you. Oh, and awesome. we have, a, you know I've used token here? We have another one called rule. Rule takes white space in your regex and puts a call to WS there for you. Actually dot WS, because we don't want to capture all the white space. Um, and that, that sort of gives you a lot of the white space handling out of the box. We use it extensively in the Perl 6 grammar. Um, so we pass six, Perl 6 using all this too. What was the significance of the um, ampersand operator inside the square brackets on your first slide, I think, or one of your first slides? Oh, in the about me and regexes? Yes. Where was this? Doesn't it make that rule never match? Yeah, this never yeah, actually matches. Never match. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, basically, if you do, you know when you do or, mm -hmm. it's a, you can match this, or this, or this? Yeah. Well, this means that it has to match this and this and this, which of course is never going to work here, but if you wanted to say that it matches this rule and the same set of characters also match this other thing, then you can do that. Um, it's actually a little bit like a look ahead plus a, a length match at the same time. Um, but you know, if we have all well, and is sort of the logical sort of thing to have as well. So, yeah, Larry shoved that in. Uh, so. Yeah, but this one would never actually match. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think your um, your your uh, trace thing could be adapted to do sort of um, more less debugger kind of errors and more user errors? So. 
uh, if I'm passing user, if I'm passing a file from a user and I want I want to tell them what's wrong with it. Mm. Well, I don't know. I wrote this more as a development tool. Um, if you want to give good error messages, then that's something that you, as the grammar author, have more information to do. I think. Um, there, there, so, are, there are ways of doing that, though. though yeah, we? yeah. I mean, at any point, you can call panic, <laughs> and it throws an exception, and you can put in whatever info you want. So, but if this is useful for six, that sounds like it's quite a quite useful thing to handle. Sorry. If this, if the grammar is used for Perl six, then that would be a quite useful. Thing yeah, to have and, that, and that's how you do language syntax tweaks. Yeah. You surpass the Perl six grammar. Oh, so, so the, the the whole grammar of Perl six is done is written in, in Perl six as, as a uh, as a grammar like that. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, it gets quite fun. Uh, the screen resolution isn't that great here for looking at this, but. You can see that. Let's try and find a. Let's find if. Uh, well, that's the statement terminator. If let's see if I can find the real, the real rule. Yeah. So you can sort of glance at this one and oh, this drives my syntax highlighting nuts. But um, you say we match the symbol if this is called a proto regex, which I don't have time to go to now, but come to me afterwards if you want to know more. Um, this is an X block, which is an expression, then a block. And then we say else if, and we can see we do zero or more else ifs, and maybe an else. So yeah, this is how we pass your 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 sort of if else else if. So yeah, we're we're using it's the same underlying engine, which means that once we get all this NFA computation stuff done, then our Perl six parser will get a bunch faster as well. So, which we badly need. Okay. I think it is it lunchtime? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go and get a beer. Thank you.